And now, everybody, welcome to the Rowdy Wrestling Podcast right here on RowdyWrestling.net. Week number, I'm going to say four, of the GFW teleconference calls leading into their next pay-per-view, Destination X. It's a fun, huge event. We got Karen Jarrett, Sienna, and Laurel Van Ness on today's call a little bit of a warning, these girls aren't professional broadcasters nor podcasters, so there's a lot of uh, over-talking every now and then, but nonetheless, very fun, very interesting, uh, I guess, teleconference interview to listen to, so check that out. But before we hop into Thangs today, we got to thank our wonderful sponsors over at HeelsAndFaces.com. It is their life's mission to make you look awesome as a pro wrestling fan they got all the best pro wrestling inspired garments you could possibly wish as well as the official rowdy wrestling podcast bag it's the rowdy wrestling podcast bag i bring it everywhere with me it's heels and faces it's a beautiful black duffel bag it's sleek it's wonderful go check them out heelsandfaces.com they support the podcast all the time you should support the podcast by going to check them out, as well as liking us on Facebook, following on Twitter, and subscribing on YouTube, iTunes, pretty much anywhere you get to listen to this show. Steve and I have been busy getting everything ready for the fall launch of the, uh, I, I call it the new season, even though we never really take complete time off uh, between things going on here. So I want to thank all of you for that. Look for huge things on the podcast and huge things today. I mean, the ladies talked about naturally what's going on with the knockouts division. Uh, there's a little bit of Braun Strowman talk there for anybody who's aware of the Karen Jarrett situation. They talked about the Broken Hardys, some Glow stuff, the GFW Hall of Fame, and uh, even some Zack Ryder talk because of, uh, you know, Laura Van Ness's uh, boyfriend, his old uh, broski, Zack Ryder. So I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Let's head right into that conference call there's a rowdy crowd today hello hello Hello. good afternoon everybody this is ross foreman with global force wrestling like to welcome everybody to this week's media teleconference recording has started i'm going to keep everybody in mute mode as we get muted hello hello well i'd like to welcome everybody again we can get going here now. I, uh, we have three special guests with us today. It's a, uh, certainly a pleasure to welcome uh, our reigning GFW knockout champion, Sienna. Good afternoon, Sienna. Hello. Good afternoon, Sienna. Are you there? <laughs> yes. Now that you have me unmuted, I am here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Next, we'd also like to welcome uh, Laurel Vaness. Good afternoon to you. Hello, thanks for having me. Thank you. And, of course, the GFW Executive Director, Karen Jarrett. Hello, good afternoon. Ready to take things up on here and have some fun. All righty. Well, well, we'll open it up. We'll, we'll give the champion the opening uh, volley. Sienna, give Hi. us your thoughts. Um, what would you like my thoughts on, exactly? Do we have a question? What's going on with you? And then we're going to open up for some questions. What's what's happening with you? You got uh, Destination X on Thursday, the seventeenth uh, of August. Your your thoughts on what's going on in the knockouts division? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna butt in and say that um, she's about to be put in her place. Well, I'm gonna butt back in and say that this question was directed toward me, so please wait your turn. We're being professionals here. Um, <laughs> What's up with me is exactly what you would expect is up with me. I am the reigning champion, the unified knockouts champion, and I'm basically at home training every day, preparing for Destination X. Not that I really need to do much more preparing, but that's just my daily routine anyway, so I might as well just keep going with it. Um, I'm not too concerned about Destination X. I just beat Rosemary in a last knockout standing match, and I think that speaks volumes to what I'm capable of. Not that you did it on your own. Okay. Um, I don't think so. I think oh. I think I'm the one that put her to the table. Thanks though. Okay, let's just move on, Ross. Perfect. Uh Laurel, let me uh let me ask you, where are things at with you? What's 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 going on in, in, in the head up there with you? Well um, right now I'm kinda just focused on um my next beverage and when happy hour is about to hit so um i just kind of i'm a fly by the seat of your pants type of gal i don't really plan things you know what i mean 
I can't say I'm surprised on that, and all I'll say to you is cheers. Uh, Karen, cheers. Before, we op- <laughs> before we open it up for some uh, questions from the media, what's, uh, what's happening in the executive wing at GFW? Uh, what's going oh, on gosh. these days? Um, there's a lot going on on the executive wing, but I think more so because of who we have on the call, um, you know, I'm looking forward to rebuilding the knockouts division, and that's my main focus right now, and getting things back to the way they were years ago. Um, so, uh, with that being said, I'd love to open the floor up, um, to some questions, and then, Ross, you and I, we can hit on some, what's going on in New York, and some live events, and all that good stuff later on. How's that sound? That sounds perfect. Uh, media, all I ask is when we do open it up for questions, you identify yourself, including your outlet, and we ask for one question and one question alone. We have a lot of people waiting to get uh, in line. And then after you ask your question, I ask that you do not get back in the queue for a second question until we uh, open it up uh, due to the amount of people we have waiting to speak to the knockouts. If you'd like to ask a question, again, you'll hear the procedure is star six. And please uh, uh, identify yourself and also who the question is geared for. Hi, guys. This is James from the Wrestling Epicenter. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with all three of you. My question would be, um, first of all, there's twofold. Do you guys feel that the Knockouts division did start this women's revolution that we're seeing throughout the entire wrestling industry right now? And furthermore, um, what do you think has really attributed to the growth and attention towards women's wrestling throughout the wrestling world as it has grown over the past 10 years. Sienna, you want to take that question? Can any of us answer this question, or how are we doing this? Sienna, go ahead. You can you can answer that. Okay, so hello, James. I do believe that 100% the knockouts started, if you want to call it a women's revolution, if you want to label it, sure. The knockouts were the first women to do this kind of stuff on TV back in, what, 2009, 2008 was when it was, like, its hottest. Um, Right now, I think that a lot of other companies have kind of jumped on board, and it's like a trendy thing. Everyone wants to have uh, women in the main event. Everyone wants to have a women's tournament for whatever. And uh, I think that the knockouts absolutely set the bar, like, 10 years ago. And I do believe that we are well on our way to bring it back to that, to where it originally started. I'll let someone else take the second part of the question. I won't be selfish yet. Oh, wow. Wow. LVN? Um, yeah, I, I agree with what... I agree with what um, exactly what Sienna said. I think that um, a lot of companies now are jumping on board and um, kind of... Um, how do I put it? Um, I guess, you know, taking credit for what we've always been doing in Impact. Um, I really don't mind. I don't mind who wants to take credit for it because at the end of the day, if you look back in history at the matches that Gail and the girls were having, that's proof right there that the women's revolution, you know, started an impact. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that, um, TNA at the time um, gave the women a platform that they could prove themselves and show that they were more than just um, having a pillow match or a lingerie match or, um, you know, whatever other type of gimmick you want to pull out and show their true talent, athletic ability, and show that they can compete just like the guys do. Hi, this is Jeremy Walker from Real Sport. This is a question for uh, Karen, mostly. I just wanted to know what the rationale was um, behind keeping the knockouts name for the women's division, given that um, other companies have dropped the the gimmicky-style names from women's wrestling. Um, I'm not sure what everyone else's um, reasoning is behind it, but we have an X division, you know, they we have a tag team division, and there's a knockout division. I think that every division of the company should have their own name and should be showcased in a different way. I want to jump in on this question because I've been getting a lot of uh, tweets about this in particular, and it's been driving me crazy. So a lot of fans, because right now there's a lot of pseudo-feminism going on where they think that they need to jump on this board of 
women's rights when really they're telling us what we should and should not be offended by. Um, being the knockout champion, I think it's safe for me to say I have zero problem with the name knockout. Knockout never had the negative connotation that, for example, Diva did. So I know that another company got rid of their name for their women's division, but it's because that name had such a negative connotation for years. Knockouts have never had a negative connotation with the name knockout. It's cool that it has, like, a double meaning because, yeah, we're knockouts like we're sexy, but we're also knockouts like we can knock you out, and I have zero issue with that. I don't think we need to jump on a train of, oh, this company is doing it, so we need to, too. We're doing our own thing. Yeah, I completely agree with that, um, and, and I get that a lot, too, is on social media. I get asked, you know, why do we still have the name knockouts, et cetera. I have no problem with it either. I, it doesn't offend me. Um, I actually quite like it, and I like the fact that it does differentiate us, and we can call ourselves the knockouts. That's, that's our group. It's like, you know, a, a girl band. I, I don't I really don't think it has um any negative con- connotation to the word. Hi, this question is uh for Karen Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com. Can you clear the air about the alleged Braun Strowman altercation that took place a few weeks ago? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um I can clear the air. It was a silly incident where you've got two people in the wrestling business playing their characters, being silly, um, and it got blown way out of proportion. Um, And the fact that the two of us are still in the news and it's still being talked about, and that's the question that you took the time to ask, I think is hysterical, to be honest with you. Um, it, it's just, it's silliness, and, um, I mean, it's it's the wrestling business. Uh, we had fun with it, and somebody took it and turned it into something more than what it was. Hey, hi, it's Lee Mayer from Alive 107.3 in uh, Scotland. Great to speak to you all. Karen, you said you were focusing on rebuilding the knockouts division, and I think many people would say that has been a a weak point, if I can say that, as of late, uh, in, certainly in impasse, it's probably the weakest it's been in a few years. Is there a specific area in terms of talent that you're looking to bring on, or are you looking to uh, different talents that you can bring in just now? Have you already got some names in mind? Um, well, if I had well, names I in had mind, mind, I wouldn't, I wouldn't unveil them on this call. Um, but I do. I think that the knockout division has taken a back seat um, and should be put forward. And there should be more females within the company. If you look back to the ratings five years ago, six years ago, four years ago, um, or you look at the minute by minute, some of the segments with the knockouts were the highest rated segments on the show. Um, there's extremely talented women out there on the independent circuit. And I'm there and I'm and, and I'm gonna make sure that the females begin to get the attention that they deserve and the platform that they deserve. Hey everybody, it's Mike Johnson from PWinsider.com. Hope you're all ah, doing okay. Cut him off, cut him off. <laughs> Hi Karen. I actually have uh, – my question is for Laurel and for Sienna. You guys have been an important part of rebuilding the knockouts division in the current incarnation of Impact Wrestling, GFW. What would you like to see, from your perspective, the company do more of to spotlight the women more? Obviously, they've, there's been more of a chance to have longer-form wrestling matches. We just had a last, woman standing, last knockout standing match. What would you like to see the company, from your perspective, do more – the spotlight the knockouts division that's not happening already. Well, I would um, just say, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, thanks. I I think um, right now I'm really proud of what we're putting out there. Um, I think it's at this point quality over quantity. What we're putting out is quality wrestling and quality entertainment segments. Um, and I don't necessarily think that we need to be putting out you know three women's matches um, a show. I think that the one women's match that we have is going to be a kick-ass match that everybody is entertained by um, and that's, you know, a five-star match. 
that being said, of course, all I want is for the women to get more time and, and um, wrestle as much as we possibly can. But at this point, I'm so happy with the way that we're going and um, the kind of sisterhood that we have in the knockout division. Um, but I think that we're only getting better from here. I totally agree with that. And I also think that a huge part of it is not just in the matches. First of all, I was going to say, just give me more time, of course, to make me like half the show and we'll be good. But like, <laughs> oh my I, think God. That, um, I think we're going in the right direction with one promo, for example, the women need the mic more in general. And I'm, I'm very grateful that the company has had faith in me with a lot of the backstage segments, a lot of the in-ring segments. Um, I think that that is really where character development lies. And so a lot more women need to get comfortable talking because a lot of them aren't like throughout women's wrestling in general, not just Indies, not just TV, but like everywhere. Women in general do not like to speak and they need to. Um, another thing that I would like, um, since we have someone who makes decisions on the line, is a lot more stipulation matches because I think women can rock them. And I think that we can tear the house down with stuff like that. We can do that kind of stuff too, just like the guys. Karen, you want to chime in on stipulation matches? I think the girls did a great job in Siena. I am happy to throw some stipulation out, matches out there for you. Good. I look forward to it. Hi, Karen. This is Raj Geary with WrestlingInc.com. Um, congratulations on the changes that are happening right now with GFW. I, I did want to ask, uh, with John Hennigan and uh, – uh, wrestling this weekend at your live events. Uh, is yes. that a one-time thing, or is that... Uh... No, sir. Well, I'm okay, hoping so... that it's not a one-time thing. I'll put it that way. But, um, no, we are in the process of talking to him, and we're trying to um, see what we can nail down. Hi, this is Nick Hausman from WrestleZone.com. Uh, my question was for Karen. Um, Karen, uh, we've been getting a lot more coming out about the Hardy Anthem TNA situation. Uh, Matt Hardy recently tweeted it's happening. Um, just this morning, Sports Illustrated ran an interview with uh, Rebby. A lot of things were said in there as well, including her saying Billy acted as an interme- intermediary for a brief period of time between them and you all. Uh, what I'm wondering, Karen, is, are we any closer to a resolution? And as you as somebody in the office, are you advocating for this to come to some kind of resolution? Um, Absolutely. I would love to see a resolution, but um, there's always two sides, three sides to a story and there's facts to a story. Um, There's a lot going on behind the scenes um, and things aren't always what they seem to be. Um, So, Commenting on it or putting anything out there, I don't think is productive in any way, shape, or form right now. Um, I think the best thing to do is to leave it up to the attorneys to handle. Uh, and I'm just basic. I'm taking the high road and trying to be <laughs> as mature as possible um, with everything going on with these higher situations. Hi, ladies. Uh, Ryan Bowman from thegorillaposition.com. Thank you for your time today. My, uh, Thank my you. Question is, my question is for uh, Karen, actually. Um, as the lady behind the knockouts division, how all-encompassing is that role? Obviously, you work with uh, the ladies to develop their characters, uh, their image. Um, does it involve in-ring stuff, the booking of the division? I guess uh, how, how involved do you have to be with the knockouts, and uh, how much time of your day does it take up? Thanks. Um, well, considering there's a lot of other things that we're also involved in with Bruce, Dutch, myself, um, I am not involved. I've never wrestled, obviously. I'm not involved with anything having to do with their in-ring um, or the character development. We leave that's up to the creative team and the agents. Um, I'm basically there, and that was what I told Jeff, I told Ed. I want to be a voice there for the women, and I want to make sure that we are showcasing our women and they are getting the time that they deserve. Um, Do I work with them, talk with them? Um, I've talked to a couple girls this week just on, you know, attire, um, different things like that, their music. Um, 
but I am there and go into the creative room, you know, a couple days a week, and I want to make sure that our girls are getting the time on the show that they deserve. Hi, my name is Stephanie Franco for a Steel Chair Magazine. Uh, bonjour, because I'm French. Um, uh, I want to ask a question to to Karen. Um, who do you have in mind uh, when you think about future knockouts? And that's, as I said earlier, um, any of the people that I have in mind, um, I'm not going to um, release that on this call. That would defeat the Thank purpose you. of bringing anyone in or bringing anyone back. Hi, ladies. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining on the call today. I'm Andy from Two Men and Their Mics. Um, my question is actually for all of you. It's been said that ratings among young women are booming on Spike TV over here in the UK. Why do you think that is? Um, probably because I'm leading the knockout division right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure with that. Um, I think that I'm um, just going to I'm gonna take this. I think that this show for a while was very dark. Um, and I think that now we're getting in touch with, you know, I'll see our, the demographics for um, kids is growing, along with females over there. And, you know, we're touching on comedy. Um, there's just other stories in the, the show. It's not so dark. It's funny. Um, I think we're trying to attract, or I think we're doing a better job of attracting all different audiences. I um, I agree. I think, like Karen said, we're, um, you know, it's, it's not just a wrestling show. It's a little bit of entertainment. We've got a little bit of comedy. We've got some high flyers. Um, and we do have that, still have a little bit of that dark side with um, Rosemary. So I think we can attract all yeah. sorts of audiences. Um, and that, that's definitely what, um, what everybody wants to see. And within the knockout th- division, we have a little bit of everything. We have some ass kickers. We have the girly girls. We have, you know, the crazy hot messes and the, the dark characters. So I think we've kind of nailed, hit the nail on the head with that one. It wants to be something different. And uh, hello, hello. Uh, this is Riju from Sports Kira in India. Uh, my question is, uh, as knockouts, uh, do you think uh, that Netflix shows like, uh, say, Glow can help uh, women's wrestling in the future? Yeah, I, I, um, I de- yeah, I definitely do. Any sort of positive light that we can shine on the um, wrestling industry and women's wrestling in particular is going to draw attention to us. And that's exactly what we need. Whether it's someone flipping through the channel and stopping on the knockouts match because they had watched Blow or, you know, any sort of wrestling movie, that that always helps us. And um, I completely support shows and movies like that. Absolutely. Hi, this is Dan Marotti with Boston Wrestling Sports. This question is for Mrs. Jarrett. Dutch Mantel has done a really great job creatively, but as a mom, you have your own focus group that you get to go home to every night with your kids. Uh, from a female point of view, do you think there's anything, any sort of big box ideas that maybe you can't go into too many details on, but that might be on the drawing board right now that could give fans that might be disenfranchised with what they look at as cookie cutter type presentation of WWE's four weekly shows and get more eyeballs watching Impact again and then having them open up the wallet for pay-per-views and live event tickets. I'm sorry, I had trouble hearing you. I'm not sure if it was my connection or yours, but can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Absolutely. I, Dutch Mantel, I think, has done a great job with what he's doing at Impact right now. You have the luxury of having your own little focus group when you go home every night. Uh, right. And a mom having the kids there. Do you have any ideas, maybe from a female point of view, um, that are up on the drawing board right now, being worked on, thought about, that could perhaps bring some lapsed impact fans back into the realm of watching on television, online, and thus getting more eyeballs on the TV show, then getting them to open up the wallet for pay-per-view events and live events when they come to the area? Um, I think that, I mean, we're obviously throwing everything we can against the wall. Um, 
for change <laughs> and um, seeing what sticks, what people like, what people don't like. And yes, I throw things off the kids. Jeff does. I mean, Cody. I mean, when Jeff comes up with different things or people send over their reel, you know, we do have our kids watch them. Um, and we want to hear, you know, each one of them come back with a different response to it. Um, but I will say also within that and me being a female and contributing on my end, um, I think that my husband does an incredible job of having people within the creative room that everyone has a different vision. Um, so we obviously will not go into different ideas on this call because that would be letting it out of the bag and we need to um, say those things for the show. But um, we are trying to – we are we want to be different. We are different, and we are doing um, – what we can to make that happen as fast as we can, but not too fast. Uh, Stephanie Frankholm again for Stitcher Magazine. My question is for Sienna. Um, uh, Karen Kim recently announced that she wanted, she, retired, she was retiring. Sorry. Uh, would you be interested in being our last opponent. I would love nothing more than to send Gail Kim into retirement. That would make me the happiest person in the world. Um, ironically, I was, well, she was my first opponent in Impact um, 2016 when I did the knockouts knockdown, and um, I beat her then, so I really don't see having a last match being any different. Um, so, yes, absolutely, I would love to be Gail's last match. Hello. 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 Uh, hi. Uh, this is Riju again from Sports Kida. Uh, this question is for uh, Sienna. Are there knockouts from the past that you wish that you had uh, faced uh, in your career? Knockouts from the past. Um, the first one that came to mind when you said that was Taylor Wilde. I know that she doesn't wrestle at all anymore, but uh, I remember watching her back in the day. And um, she's just a feisty little thing and she's small I've, I've never met her in real life but she's so small that I know I could launch her across the ring that's the first one that comes to mind um, who else I want to say Awesome Kong as well just because I mean she would be she's a bigger than I am so I think that there is a there's a challenge there but and I would she'd absolutely destroy you um, I don't know about all of that I mean she's been around for a long time I'm younger I'm faster um, but she obviously has that experience, and she is she's a little scary. I think I'm scary too, though. But um, I would I would love to test my abilities against someone like her. Oh, and Havoc too, for that matter. I would love for Havoc to come in. Whether she will be friend or foe, I don't know. Mm. Hello, it's Mike Johnson from PW Insider again. How are you? We're wonderful. Um, I wanted to ask about the creative end of the knockouts division. When the division was first created, Dutch Mantel and Scott D'Amour were a big part of it. Um, can you break down who's working specifically on the creative end of the knockouts division now, or is it just the entire team is working on all aspects of the company, including, obviously, the knockouts? I, I so all ends of uh, everyone in creative is contributing on that, but obviously um, Dutch and Scott and uh, Sanjay, um, I mean, they're more in tune with it, um, but it is, it's, it's open to the entire room, um, and everybody's throwing what they can, obviously, against the wall, but those three are really, they, they are incredibly um, gifted in dealing with it, I would say that. I'm not sure if that answered your question or not. Um, but it's a team effort across the board. And for the uh, media members who have been texting me that you have a second question, yes, you may chime in with a second question, uh, one, one at a time, but if you want to get back in queue, no problem. Uh, Steph von Koven for Steve Chamag again. My question is for Sienna again. 
uh, I wanted to ask you if you were interested in some ways to be involved in an MMA match because you're using a lot of MMA locks. Um, so do you think one day to be involved in MMA? Is your question if one day I'm going to have an MMA fight? Is that your question? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, I've actually already done that. Sorry so. for the phone accent. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. It's all right. Um, it's also the phone doesn't help, you know. But anyway, um, I've actually already had an MMA fight right before I got signed to Impact Wrestling in December of 2015. Um, I had my first MMA fight where I won second round, Rene Kuchok, and choke. Um, and I was thinking of taking my second fight around April or May of 2016, and then I ended up getting signed with Impact So I obviously put MMA uh, second to my new career here in Impact um, because if I do, if I did get injured in an MMA fight, um, that would obviously affect my path here in Impact. So I, I set that aside. Still doing the training. I still train to this day. Um, so that's not ruled out for the future. But, yes, I have already had one MMA fight. Hi guys, it's Lee from Alive 107.3 here in Scotland again. Obviously, you're just back from from Impact in India, uh, and and just the fans around the world love to see the knockouts in action. How does the audience reaction differ going from places like India to the US to over here in the UK? And with that in mind, when can we expect to see the knockouts back over here in the UK in person? The reaction, the reaction. Differ everywhere. For everywhere. Um, it's it's um, pretty it's commonly known that, like for example, that, like, if you go to Japan, Japan, the audience is very silent, silent for the most of the match. The um, they do like a little golf clap, but they don't get too rowdy. Too rowdy. Um, mm. They do sometimes. They I mean, I've seen them get rowdy, but uh, every audience differs. And like I found, for example, in India, they were so loud, and I I I really think that they were almost more hyped than anyone because they rarely get to see us, and they rarely get to see wrestling live at all. So it was a huge deal for them to see us. Um, And in the impact zone, I mean, people get loud, but at the same time, they it's almost like, I don't want to say they're privileged, but they do get to see us every time we come there, and a lot of times it's the same fans. So sometimes I look out there and I see people, they're just like staring, like, I don't know. I think sometimes they get desensitized because they, they, they get it all the time. So I'm so excited to go out traveling. No offense, fans in the impact zone, but like you need to take it up a notch. You need to step it up a notch and be like these other cities we go to that appreciate us when we're there. I am, um, yeah, I, I particularly love traveling for wrestling because you, you do get to see a new crowd, new faces, new fans, and with that, of course, comes a new level of excitement that sometimes, like Sienna said, we don't have um, in the impact zone. And with the UK, gosh, I think Karen would know when we're coming back. I'm so excited um, to get back to the UK. That would be amazing. Yeah, when we go back, Karen. Yeah, we do not have a confirmed date, but I know Jeff is currently working on that. Um, so hopefully we'll to announce that within the next few months. Um, as for the impact zone and the fans in Orlando and the fans that travel in there, um, incredibly thankful for them that they have continued to do that for so many years. And, you know, I look out there and I see faces that I saw years and years ago, and there's a lot of new faces But it's hard because they are, um, I'm going to say it like they're spoiled. Um, they get to see us every week. Um, and we're incredibly grateful that we have, um, you know, Universal Studios and that we have our fans that, you know, show up at every taping. But there's nothing like getting out on the road and live events and being able to be in front of a different crowd every night. And the energy that's in that crowd and the talent, and you, you just, you feed off of it. You feed off of each other. Um, and, I mean, it's just, there's nothing in the world like it. Hi, it's Jeremy Walker from Real Sport again. A uh, question for Laurel. Wondering if you could reflect on your time uh, on Tough Enough. Yeah, um, I get asked that question a lot. That was one of uh, the, tough, the toughest things I've ever done. Mentally, physically, it was absolutely draining. But I had 
such a great time meeting the other contest, contestants. Um, those are still people I I speak to on a weekly basis, and um, I wish them nothing but success. With Tough Enough, you know, my, my only goal was to win. And so when I was kicked off, I just kind of thought, okay, well, I'm going to use that as a stepping stone and um, try to get my name out there as much as possible. And that is actually how I – was able to get in touch with impact. So I'm very happy for what I went through during tough enough, because it definitely has led me to where I am now. Hey ladies, it's Mike Johnson from PW insider again. Um, in recent months, the Netflix version of gorgeous ladies of wrestling has gotten a lot of press. I was curious on your thoughts on the series, if you've watched it and maybe what professional wrestling in general can learn from that show when it comes to presenting women? Well, like I said before, um, any light shone on women's wrestling and wrestling in general, I think is a positive light um, because at this point, I think that we need all the fans that we can get for women's wrestling. I, um, I hope that people from, take from that Glow series, the next Netflix Glow series, what they will, and decide to tune into Impact on Thursdays and watch the Knockouts division. I'm only about three episodes into Glow, so I can't give my solid opinion on it quite yet. Um, it already has been full of drama and um, trial and tribulation, so I guess that is very closely related to our real life. But I, I really need to watch the whole thing before I can really say how I feel about it. Um, I am a binge watcher, so I watched the entire season. Um, I love that it's drawing attention to women's wrestling, and I love that Tina um, had a part in it and um, some other familiar faces that they were able to be a part of the making of that. Um, I will say this on the Netflix. I, I loved it, and it, it felt real, real-life struggles. Um, I just wish that... It was more towards the, or that people come out with something geared more towards family, children, that they can watch it, because I would have loved for my daughters um, to be able to have watched that season. But due to some of the language and different things, I'm just not comfortable with them watching it. Hi, this is Raj Geary with WrestlingInc.com again. Uh, my question is for Laurel. You've done a done a great job with your character uh, this year, and I just wanted to know uh, what influences you've had in in creating that character, or if that's just something you've been coming up with on your own. Thank you. That's fun. Uh, <laughs> that character has kind of been the brainchild of everyone. Um, Dutch and I worked on that originally uh, when we cut a promo after I was left at the altar. Um, and Dutch kept kind of pushing me to get a little bit crazier and a little bit crazier. And the finished product was a promo where I was drinking champagne and crying and singing The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow. And um, it blew up. Like, I did not realize how insane I would look or um, how much people would love it. But from then on, um, everyone has kind of given me their input and their take on what this character is or, you know, what crazy people have come into their life and what they've done that maybe I can include in my character. And I really appreciate that because every single person has a totally different take on what this hot mess, crazy, jilted bride should be like. And I've been able to include um, some of those things in my promos and in backstage segments and in the ring. And um, I love that. I can't totally take credit for it because it really has been uh, every single person in the locker room and backstage working on this with me. Hi, it's Nick Hasman from WrestleZone.com again. Uh, Laurel, my next question was uh, for you, and it was uh, kind of similar. Um, my question was about your very high-profile relationship with WWE superstar Zack Ryder. Uh, what does Zack think about Laurel Van Ness, and uh, how is working for two different companies? How does that affect y'all's relationship? <laughs> <laughs> well, we call it the interpromotional relationship, but um, he he loves he loves the character. He thinks it's absolutely ridiculous, and he um, 
absolutely love screenshotting pictures of me being crazy and sending them to me to make fun of me. So it's kind of a, a running joke that we have every Thursday when I get a new picture of myself and I didn't know I could look, you know, that crazy. But um, uh, on the relationship side of things, um, that, that it really doesn't matter who we work for, what company we work for, or even if we were both wrestlers or not. At the end of the day, when we come home, we don't take work home with us. And we talk about normal things that, you know, what flowers we're going to plant in the garden or what tile is going to go in the house. You know, we're not sitting there at the dinner table talking about what spots we can do in our next match. So um, I think surprisingly, you would be very bored if you sat with us and um, and listened to our conversations. <laughs> Hi, it's Sam from the um, Total Wrestling Show. Um, we ask everybody this question, and we've had a lot of um, serious ones tonight. So, does pineapple belong on pizza? That is to everybody. Yes. Laurel says yes. I agree, yes. Pineapple on pizza all the way. Fight me. Absolutely not. No. How did I know you were going to say that? Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't put pineapple on my pizza. Extra pineapple for me. It's a fruit. It's a fruit. <laughs> Hello, uh, this is uh, Riju from uh, Sports Kira again. Uh, now, uh, the wedding angle between uh, Laurel and uh, Braxton was one of the hottest, hottest uh, angles from uh, uh, Impact TNA in recent memory. What do you think made it work, and how important was Maria Canellis to the entire uh, segment? Um, in my opinion, I think what made it work is kind of like I said before, is there were so many um, opinions and um, kind of ideas that were put into this big wedding scenario. Um, everyone gave their opinion on the way that they thought it should go, and I think that we... Um, Pick the absolute best scenario, and it and it worked, and and the crowd reacted. And uh, Maria was a huge part of that segment leading up to the wedding. It, it really was, you know, 75% Maria planning all of this in the back, um, and uh, cutting these promos and things like that. And that's kind of what the buildup was all about. Was Maria? I do think that the fans hated Maria. Like people can say whatever they want, but the fans hated Maria so much and that's why that segment worked. They wanted they wanted to see Allie beat her so badly. And I also want to say that even though I was probably the least important person in that entire segment, that was like the rowdiest I've ever seen the impact zone the entire time I've been there so far. Like it felt like the fans were surrounding the ring. It, they were so loud the entire time. So loud that I could not hear Laurel on the microphone. I know in post they make sure you can hear her, but I was sitting next to her and I could not hear her talking because the fans were screaming the entire time. And I couldn't even hear myself. I remember that. I'll never forget. I could not even hear the only words that were coming out of my mouth. Um, and I think, I mean, just to chime in, I was not there at the time, but um, Maria obviously did a great job, but to have someone get over the heel, you've got to have amazing people um, as baby faces. And I think it's a great, everybody that was a part of that storyline at the time, um, it took all of you to get it, to be where it was. And I think everybody did an absolutely amazing job on all ends. But for people to hate Maria, that's how much they had to love Allie. She had to do her part in that, and I think um, that her, Braxton, all of you did an amazing job in that storyline. Uh, Steph from Coombe for Stitcher Magazine again. My question is for Laura. Uh, you, as you just noted, you just said, uh, in real life you're in a relation with Zack Ryder, but Currently, on, on storyline, you're in a kind of love triangle between Grado and Kongo Kong. My question is a, a very women, woman question. Who has the most sex appeal, Grado or Kongo Kong? <laughs> 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 
I They're can't both even so have sweet. <laughs> I can't tell you, you that woman I question. That. If I tell you that, I'm going to have some very angry men on my hand. And I like to have more than one man at all times. So if I tell you that, I'm going to be left with one, maybe none. So <laughs> no comment for me. <laughs> yeah. Hi, this is Raj Geary with WrestlingInc.com again. Uh, my question was for Sienna, uh, given her MMA background. Uh, do you see Conor McGregor having a chance against Floyd May- Mayweather this month? Oh, that is a good question. Um, I don't know, man, because he only has the boxing element, so I really, really don't know how that's going to go. I think that at the same time, I do believe <laughs> – I know this is going to be a controversial opinion, but I do believe everything on TV is fake – so I do believe that um, Floyd is going to win, and then Connor is going to challenge him to an MMA fight, and then Connor's going to win because they're both protected by their own sport. If Connor loses in boxing, he doesn't really lose. He lost to a champion boxer. If Floyd loses in MMA, he didn't really lose. He lost to a champion MMA fighter. So they're both protected. They make billions, millions, millions of dollars. And I don't know, maybe they'll have a third one for a draw. I'm not really sure, but I'm telling you, and at least the high-profile fights, they are taking stuff from professional wrestling. That's all I'm going to say. Absolutely. And it's all a work, 100%. Good morning, David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer. Uh, my question is for Karen Jarrett. Karen, you and Sienna, there's been a bit of tension throughout the call this morning. Uh, just wondering, have you ever considered stepping in the ring as a professional wrestler, possibly uh, getting physical to solve some of these issues? Um, hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I have not. Um, I did have a match with um, Jeff, my ex-husband in China, um, that I got, uh, you know, was in there a little bit. Um, but I have incredible respect for what these women do and how hard they train and the dedication that they put in to um, our, our business. Um, and I feel like it would be incredibly disrespectful on my end to think that um, I have a place there. Um, I don't, I mean, I absolutely 100% don't think um, that is ever in the cards. <laughs> For me, or I will say it is, it is not in the cards for me. Um, that's that, that's their place, not mine. Uh, hello, uh, Riju from Sportskira again. This is for Laurel and Sienna. Uh, what was your experience like in India, and uh, do you see uh, GFW coming to India in the future, maybe? Oh, I'm sure that we'll be back. That crowd was nuts, man. And I mean that in a good way. I don't know how this can translate. Um, it, the crowd was so loud, and they were very receptive, and it was very fun being there. I love looking back at pictures and seeing every single person in the crowd excited and on their feet and throwing up their hands and just being crazy. And and it was definitely a fun, fun crowd to be in front of. I, I, will... I, I agree. I totally agree. I loved it there. Um, I look at photos and I see footage here um, in the studio, and that was an incredibly difficult trip for our roster, um, travel-wise, show-wise, all across the board. And I think it probably could go down in history as from what I have seen and what I have here as one of the best trips that our talent um, has ever had. And me, um, I feel it is due to the uh, audiences there and just the excitement that surrounded the company there. We have time for just a couple more questions here. It's Jeremy Walker from Real Sport. Um, as you go forward and uh, more knockouts are introduced to the company and things progress, do you think it's time to see a knockouts tag team championship division? Absolutely. Anything any that more I can belts, do. Any more belts that I can win, I am totally down for it. So, yeah, bring more. <laughs> bring all of them. Oh Laurel and I, we got this. Oh, yeah, we got uh, it, girl. Uh, 
Mm. So just keep that in mind, Karen. Like, if that happens, Laurel and I need it. We, we deserve a shot. I'm Especially considering I'm the unified champion right now, I feel like I have dibs. Oh, God. Sienna, I can promise you this. I would never put Laurel in a position where she had to be attached to you. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm already guiding her throughout her entire crazy mess right now. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how much longer that goes on. Okay. <laughs> Your disrespect, like, is you. Mm. I don't think that's. Hi, right. that so, um, hey, Ross. Do we have any more questions? Yep, we we have a question right now. Hi, this is Deborah from the Total um, Wrestling Show again. Karen, if you could book a dream match with the knockouts, who would it be with? I would have to say Kong, Awesome Kong, versus Sienna. I'm down. Book it. Good. You're down for getting your ass kicked. I don't know about all that, but, uh, I mean, there's only one way to find out. Uh, Steph Falcon for Steel Chair Magazine again. My question is for Sienna and Laura. Uh, wanted to know who were your inspirations, uh, women or men, uh, in terms of wrestling? Uh, who were the wrestlers that uh, inspired you? I'm going to keep it 100. Uh there are very few women that inspire me and I don't, I don't mean, I know that's probably going to be taken the wrong way, but for, I'm, I'm thinking of like back in my childhood right now, there are a lot of women that inspire me back when I used to watch wrestling as a kid, when I fell in love with wrestling, um, I did have a couple favorites, but it was really a lot of the guys and the way they move and their aggression is what um, really hooked me as far as the actual matches. Um, one of my favorites growing up was uh, Stone Cold. Steve Austin, and I, I mean, I don't really think I need to explain, because I'm sure a lot of people have the same story, I think that he was a fan favorite in general, um, but just the attitude, and the way he moved, and the, the way he moved in the ring in particular, not just like, not just the beer, and the middle fingers, and the catchphrases, but the way they move, um, oftentimes is very different from the females, and I think that's usually what also determines a, a good female wrestler is how they move. You see a lot of the girls that are very, like, hesitant and they're just too dainty. And uh, I think for me, I'd have to say that the two people that have inspired me the most were, of course, um, Trish Stratus and, um, and Gail. I mean, the way that Gail moves in the ring, like Sienna said, you can tell a lot about her as a wrestler by the way she moves in the ring and her aggressiveness. I have always been um, an athlete, but still very girly. So I always loved, um, I always, always loved watching Gail and Trish. Hi, uh you from Sportskira again. So if you guys had to make uh, predictions for the uh, GFW Hall of Fame this year, uh, one prediction, who would you uh, say would go in this year? I'm sorry, for what? Who do you predict to go into the uh, GFW Hall of Fame? Hmm. I'll let you girls take that first. The Hall of Fame, let's see. What do you think, Laurel? Um, I mean, that's a tough one. All right, well, then I'll answer it. I think that there should be no one other than my father-in-law to be inducted into the um, Hall of Fame this year. He started this company with his son, um, and he deserves to be there uh, next to Jeff. Final question, Ryan, it's yours once again. Hey, ladies, thank you for your time again today. Uh, this is Ryan Bowman from the Gorilla Position dot com. <clears throat> um, putting aside all uh, personalities or any conflicts that may be happening, um, 
how much is there a synergy amongst the ladies uh, in the locker room to say, hey, everybody talks about a wrestling revolution that happened a couple of years ago, but we have a chance to recreate that again here in Global Force Wrestling. And how much do you guys talk about that? And again, thanks for your time today. Um, in my opinion, that's like the one thing that we all have in common. I don't know if you feel the same way, Sienna. I definitely do. I think that um, uh, our locker room is, is pretty tight. Um, give or take a few people, of course, you know, stories here and there. Um, but overall, we have a really tight sisterhood. As much as I'm looking forward to more women joining the locker room, I really hope that um, we go about it the old school way, which is how I feel I was brought into this company, because I really do think that uh, when I first came in, Gail was basically scouting me. Like, Gail was feeling me out, like, is this a person we want around? And I really hope we keep that going and we don't bring in toxic people to the locker room um, because that's the last thing we need. And um, so as much as I'm looking forward to working with more talent, our small locker room right now is very tight. We hype each other up. We are working toward a common goal. And we all really do want to make impact great again, not even trying to use a hashtag right now. But you know what I mean. Ryan, first off, I want to say that your mother raised you well. You have incredible manners. Um, uh, but also, let's not lose sight of that every female in that locker room wants to have the main spot on the knockouts roster. So it is still competitive. It is still cutthroat. No matter how fun and dandy everybody wants to make it appear, this is a business. Um, you're showing up and you're trying to make your dream come true and you but want to be the one that is being pushed. So while, yes, you know, the locker room is great right now from everything that I've heard, um, this is still, this is your life. Um, if it's you or somebody else that's going to be pushed, you're going to stab that person in the back and you're going to take that spot. So um, I think that's just a little reality check on the call that, uh, you know, yeah, everyone can get along, but we I all mean, know yeah, what the end result think, is that everyone wants. I think that everyone, I think I, I have no problem in the actual locker room itself because people are afraid of me in general and no one's going to say anything to my face. So maybe it is, maybe it is, but um, they can all do that amongst themselves and the day they step to me will be the last day. So I guess we'll just have to take it from there. Sienna, let's not lose sight. This isn't a club we joined in high school. I'm sorry, what? I said, let's not lose sight of this. This is your future. This is you making your dream come true. This is not a club you joined in high school. Oh, I'm not here to make friends. Don't get it twisted. I'm the current champion, and I'm going to stay that way. What I'm saying is no one has anything to come to say to my face. If they do, I'll address it then. Well, I appreciate all the calls today. We're going to give uh, Laurel a uh, first chance at a, f a final thought. There are no final thoughts. Thank you, for everyone, for calling in, and I hope I continue to entertain you. Karen, how about from you? I want to say thank you to everyone um, for calling in and for all the questions, and I hope we were able to answer everything. Um, and also, Friday, August 4th, Long Island, New York, Impact 5, Saturday, August 5th, uh, Staten Island. Um, if you're in the area, I hope you can make it. If it's a short enough drive, I hope you can make it. But it's going to be exciting. And finally, of course, the uh, reigning Knockouts champion, Sienna, your final thoughts. I would like to say you're welcome for giving you an hour of my time when I could be doing something um, much more productive. And keep it classy and keep those pinkies up. Perfect. I appreciate everybody's time. We'll be back next Wednesday with a, a triple header. We have three stars coming on the teleconference next week. You don't want to miss that. Following week, right before Destination X, we will have two teleconferences the following week. Stay tuned. I'll be emailing you about those. Thanks, Ross. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>Thanks for downloading today's episode. If you're new around here and like what you've heard, hit that like button and slap the subscribe one too. Leave me a comment and tell me what you thought, and I'll see all of you next time.